today we had a meeting with Anne Applebaum, who told us about her recent book, uh, The Iron Curtain, The Crushing of Eastern Europe, 1944 to 1956. Uh, and I had a conversation with her about it. It's a very important book because uh, nowadays communism in Europe uh, came to an end 20 years ago. And we tend to assume, therefore, that it was never a really strong or serious or threatening power. It is important for us to know uh, that it was very strong. Uh, after the Second World War, it seemed irresistible. Um, and that it blighted the lives of millions of people. Uh, it gave some people, of course, new opportunities. But it also produced a very repressive system, and one which in the long run didn't work terribly well. And it's important for us to know why this happened. In some sense, the origins of this book do lie in my previous book about the Gulag, not in a direct way. This is not a, a sequel of any kind. Um, but the, while writing the Gulag book, I became very interested in the question of why people go along with, why they went along with Soviet communism, and what was the nature of Soviet ideology? And, I, and, and what, what was so compelling about it? Why did it work? I spent, I think, six years, you could also maybe count it as seven years, doing research for this book. Um, it, most, of the, most of that time was spent in archives. I worked in archives in Poland, in Hungary, and in East Germany. Um, I, I made use of archives in, in, the, in Russia as well. Um, I worked in different kinds of archives, so not, not just state and government archives, but also archives of the Hungarian Film Institute, archives of Polish radio, um, some East German uh, Art Institute archives um, to find some stories about artists. Um, in addition to archives, I did interviews. Uh, obviously, I was interviewing mostly very old people, um, but I, I, I think it, it comes to several dozen people that I interviewed in, in each of the three countries. Uh, and finally, of course, I did my best to go through the enormous secondary literature on this subject, to, to read what had been written and try and understand the historiographical debates um, and, and to read what memoirs had been written. And there are some very, um, some very good memoirs of this period, too. Uh, communists believed that they were creating a socialist system which was inevitable. And yet, on the other hand, they acted as if it wasn't inevitable at all, as though you had to struggle constantly to set it up. Um, and you had enemies all around well, you. Because it never no. worked the way it was supposed to work. Right. It was supposed to happen in this easy way, and it didn't ever happen in the easy way it was supposed to. And so there must be an explanation, and the explanation is saboteurs, spies, diversionaries. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the people aren't behaving the way they're supposed to behave. Therefore, there, there has to be an explanation. And this happens over and over again in both Soviet and East European history, that mm. the... The, the events are not unfolding in the right way, and therefore we need a scapegoat or a different explanation. I mean, it's, but you're right. I mean, it, 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 and it happens over and over again. And there is the interesting thing about using archives is that the party and the and at all levels is having these discussions all the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. here's what we're meant to be doing. It's not happening that way, and why? And they and they look for answers. To, yes. But it shows you how important the ideology was. Indeed. You know, they yes. they are taking it seriously, and they. You know, but it's not working, and so why not? So they, we need to find a new policy. What interests me the most about this kind of story is how how individuals deal with these kinds of situations. You know, when when uh, faced with a war or faced with uh, the, the the encroachment of a totalitarian regime, people have individual people have choices in their lives, and they have to make decisions. And what what prompts them to make one decision or another? That's that's in a way what I find the most interesting about this period of history. Um, and and gen generally speaking, uh, that's those the, the details are the most important part of this book. I mean, I I sketch the outline, but uh, the, the the I try and give the, the historical background what much of which is known already, but it's actually by filling in these, by telling these stories, that I think the reader can get a better idea of what it was like to live then and um, what kinds of pressures people are under. History always leaves a trace on the present. Uh, the, the shape of our institutions, the way our schools work, um, the way our, our, the, the, the nation is organized, this is, is, is always a reflection of things that happened one, two, three, four generations ago. 
And then, of course, this is, uh, this is the same with the communist period. Uh, you, you no, know, of course, nobody today is, you know, lives in a Stalinist reality, but the, some of the echoes of Stalinism, the, the, the fear that people felt that was in people's families, um, the, 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 the anger they felt about having to conform, um, some, of that, some of that you can still feel in Poland and in other parts of Eastern Europe today.